Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, according to Gartner, demands for machine learning is growing at an astonishing rate with the large majority of organizations surveyed reporting that they were using or investigating machine learning in their operations already. Predictably, demand is tripling over last year. And this trend can be seen across verticals, markets, organization sizes, geographies, and public-private boundaries. So for all practical purposes, wherever there is data, there will soon be a need for artificial intelligence. However, that ubiquity of demand is not matched by ease of access. AI algorithms can be time-consuming and difficult to train, sometimes requiring the need for specialised hardware and data stores and teams to operationalise those models. But thankfully, the major cloud AI and ML vendors have made those all-important strides to address access, albeit from a centralised perspective. However, compliance and governance remain in the earliest of standardisation phases, even as AI models accelerate into their third generation. And security and transparency in particular have suffered. Even more importantly, the right to control your data once it's been processed is almost absent from the conversation entirely. So with the above concerns challenging AI practitioners worldwide, the concept of the combination of AI and blockchains has emerged as a possible solution. So today I invited the guys from Genie.io and they provide a decentralized machine learning algorithm accessible by smart contracts to provide secure, pay-as-you-go, powerful machine learning on a proprietary AI-enhanced blockchain. So come with me all the way to London so we can speak with Cosmas Wong, founder and CEO at Genie, who's going to talk about all this and also share his story of leaving the legal world behind to join a career in tech. So let's get him on the podcast now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? My name is Cosmos Wong. I started out as a lawyer right here in London. Uh, in 2010, I moved to New York to uh, start my first company. That was a data services company for hedge funds. Uh, we managed to sell the company in 2016, uh, so that was nice. Um, and then during that period of time, I, get, I started getting involved in another company called Grecian Technologies, which I started. And basically, it was kind of born out of curiosity in the sense that Personally, as a consumer, uh, we were getting a lot of advertising, digital advertising that was irrelevant and unwelcome. So we were trying to figure out whether or not there was a way to use machine learning to understand data structures and, and data behaviors in order to help target messaging and advertising in a much more efficient way and that that was uh, that was how you know this this whole machine learning process got started um in 2018 um i met richard jarrett uh, who's my business partner now and co-founder and based on a lot of questions that I, I sort of at the time that we were being asked about whether or not this machine learning this predictive machine learning technology that we had built whether or not it could actually live on a blockchain that was how genie got started um, so, so uh, in 2018, we uh, we did an ICO um, out of Jersey, uh, the Channel Islands, and then we've been we've been building Genie since. Wow, it must have felt like an incredibly huge leap going from the world of legal to tech. Was that daunting at the time? Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, at the time we all kind of thought that we knew what we were doing, but it was only after that that we knew that we had absolutely no idea what we were doing. <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, well, it certainly seems like it was the right choice. And according to Gartner, demand for machine learning is growing at an astonishing rate, especially with the large majority of organizations they surveyed reporting that they use or investigating machine learning in their operations. And demand is expected to triple over the next year alone. So can you tell me about this trend and why whenever there is data, there will always be need for artificial intelligence? Because I think at the moment, a lot of people are hearing the buzzword, but they don't understand the reasons behind it. I think you're right, and I think you've, you've, uh, you've hit the problem right there. There's a lot of data, and, and we, we create a data trail, a digital data trail everywhere we go. Um, from the time we open the computer, we log on, we, you know, we, we, we shop online for our groceries, we put in our credit card details, our loyalty information, you know, all of that creates a digital trail. And it creates a, a set of uh, data structures and, and behavior patterns that that's relevant, but at the same time can also be be uh, be misused. Um, so I think I think people are trying to understand how we can actually use these data structures and these 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 digital behavior patterns um, in order to help us um, use data in a much more responsible and a much more efficient way that benefits us. Um, so I think you know when people talk about machine learning um, and and the solutions around machine learning, I think I think the 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 general confusion is first of all what is artificial intelligence, um, you know how do you actually approach these technologies, um, and how do you do it in a way you know that actually does actually solve your problems. I think a, a big part of the misunderstanding is that people see AI technologies and machine learning technologies as as a sort of a one size fits all. Um, solution. So you throw all the data that you have into this big giant pot, you know, and you run some algorithms, um, and then it, you expect it to solve all of your problems. Um, that that's just not our experience. Um, you 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 literally have to be much more specific. Uh, we found that you have to identify the issue, the problem. You have to look at the data that you have. Uh, you have to train the machine, um, and then you have to see what kind of answers you get. And it's only from there that you kind of expand, um, expand the reach and expand the program. Um, so, so there's a huge demand for it. There is a, there's a huge demand for it because we have to find a better way of, of using data. Um, and, and I think, you know, we're just, we're just starting to see the beginnings of this. And a lot of those problems that you just mentioned, I think a lot of the time around the ease of access and being able to learn how AI, AI algorithms can actually be time consuming and ultimately very difficult to train, which is an inconvenient truth for a lot yeah. of businesses. But yeah. can you can you expand on that problem? Yeah, because because part of the part of the issue, right, is is uh, is this misunderstanding, as I said, that that um, ML technology is, is you know, is going to solve all of your problems. Um, a big a big part of the process um, is how you actually identify the issues and then train the machine in order to to uh, to solve those problems. Um, if I could give you an example, for example, if you're a retailer and you wanted to sell more shoes, um, you literally have to have the right data sets to to input into the machine and train it to understand whether or not you have been selling shoes, why you've been selling shoes, what kind of shoes you've been selling over what period of time over the last you know, several years, for example. And it is only that, that the machine might actually be able to understand and see um, and detect repeatable behavior patterns amongst shoe buyers um, before it can actually tell you that you might be selling more shoes or you might not be selling more shoes. Um, so, so a big part of um, of the process of understanding what the solution could be, is this idea about needing the right sets of data and training the machine in order to answer those questions. And as a result of all those problems, you set out to tackle them with a solution, and you now provide a decentralized machine learning algorithms to ex uh, that are accessible by smart contracts to pro ultimately provide secure, pay-as-you-go, powerful machine learning on a proprietary AI-enhanced blockchain. But can you tell the listeners a little bit more about the kind of problems that you're on a mission to solve with this? Yeah. So, so the, the, the problems that we saw with traditional um, machine learning solutions um, is, is that data sets aren't consistent, right? You've got, 
you've got uh, data sets coming from different places, uh, they look different, they, they, they might have holes in them. Um, and and what, what the blockchain does, right, is that it forces, it forces a, a consistent data set into the blockchain because otherwise it won't be verified. Um, you have a verification system that you know that the data sets are incorrect. Um, and what we've done is that we've actually managed to reduce the size of our machine learning algorithms um, so that they actually sit onto the nodes of a blockchain. And we are using the, the natural infrastructure of a decentralized model, which is the blockchain, like a neural net. So what we're trying to solve by decentralizing it is to reduce the size of uh, servers, for example, that are currently needed um, to, to run these machine learning processes because they're now decentralized. We are forcing consistent data sets into the machine learning process, which is, which is what's required. And by actually processing all of that data on the chain itself, um, we actually then create a, a situation where you don't need to have data moving from one server to another. Um, and therefore, it actually is, is, a, is a much more secure uh, system in order to, to, to process that data. So, so, so that's the, those are the problems that we were seeing with the traditional model, and that's what we were trying to solve by putting on the blockchain. And the key part of the reach and power of that GNY network is the inventory of specialized smart contracts that I believe execute AI and ML functions natively on the chain. But can you put all that information into a use case just to help listeners and business leaders understand how it could work in their world and the kind of value that it could offer? Yeah, absolutely. So um, the the sort of example that I like to use is that if, if you imagine yourself as a client um, of, of a financial services uh, company, um, you know you you'd have you know a mortgage with a bank, you have um, you'd have your credit you know scoring, your credit reports, you got you have uh, your bank accounts, your loans, your car loans, your insurance products, um, and and. What I would say is, is that if you can imagine, you know, a, a situation where you, you, you are the master of your data, um, every time you update, say, for example, your income information um, or your credit score information, that will automatically change the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the mortgage rates, for example, that you, you qualify for, you know, or you would qualify for a lower rate of your on your car insurance, and you have an increased credit score, right? So, so on a blockchain, all of that can be securely, securely. Um, those processes can be securely performed, um, and 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 what happens as well is that you know, with our system, that information is then analyzed with other information, right, of, of other users. And it could actually then direct more relevant products, more relevant insurance products to you um, and, and reduce the noise of advertising and marketing that you get from the insurance companies. So, so I think that that's, uh, you know, there, there are lots of sort of other um, um, use cases, I think, that we're working on. A lot of it is in, in, in fraud detection, for example, some of it's in retail, but, but that, is the, that is the one that I like to use. And we did mention the tech buzzwords a few minutes ago, and it does seem, though, I think, that the most exciting part of all these emerging technologies is what happens when they all converge. So do you think that when artificial intelligence, machine learning and blockchain continue to evolve, will undoubtedly, do you think they'll undoubtedly drive the future of transformation across multiple industries? Because it seems to me that when they converge, that's when the exciting stuff happens. Oh, I, I, think, I think you're right, Neil. I think... I think AI and uh, and uh, blockchain technologies are two new technologies which we, which we are really just starting to see emerge. Um, people need to understand it a lot better first, I think, and I think that, that there's a there's a lot more. I think there's a lot of um, testing going on now, um, but I think when the training wheels come off, um, both for AI and for blockchain, uh, and and people see the the decentralization of data starting to happen. Um, these technologies will converge and then you're going to see an explosion. And how are you overcoming the the big adoption challenge that we're all familiar of? We all hear about it all the time, but how are you tackling that and getting new clients on board? Well, what we've done with this with the decentralization process um, is to create a set of tools uh, for developers uh, in order to help them integrate 
smaller companies and smaller sets of data into the blockchain. Um, we, our goal is, is to, I like to use the word democratize yeah. artificial intelligence to use the, and, and use the blockchain as a method of doing it. Because right now, um, AI technology or machine learning technology is, is, is uh, you know, is confusing. It's very, very large, and 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 it's sold by very, very big players. And and there, there are a lot of people that we're talking to right now who don't actually need an all singing or dancing type machine learning process. Um, they just need they just need something that analyzes their data properly, and it, and and that will work. So the the idea here is to make sure that people actually have the ability to one understand what the problem is, to be able to solve it with the tools that we have. Um, so that's where we've actually launched a data diagnostic uh, process on, on the AWS uh, marketplace so that smaller companies can reach out to us and talk to us so that we can actually help them diagnose the problem. And compliance and governance are two other subjects that remain in their earliest of standardization phases at the moment. But what needs to change in that area, do you think? I think the... <sighs> There's been a lot of governance um, around how we use data. Uh, the European GDPR is, is, a, is, a very, is a very clear example of that. The Americans don't have a similar thing. Um, I think they're trying to do something, but, but I think it's, it's going to be a problem for them to do it in, in large scale there. But, but that is, I think, going to continue. And I think the, the, uh, the issue with, with blockchain is that it, it is also... Um, it is also muddied by, you know, the byproduct of the blockchain, which is cryptocurrencies, right? Um, and I think that there's also going to be a lot of compliance and governance around that. So th there's 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 got to be a lot more transparency around um, around the use of data, around the marketing and use of cryptocurrencies, and and we we're, we're actually in the middle of a lot of those discussions. And I appreciate you're probably locked down to a whole heap of NDAs and all that kind of other things. But I mean, what's next for you guys? Is there anything else that you are able to share with us today about the road ahead, or or maybe just leave us with the occasional teaser? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, we've we've just launched our test net a few weeks ago, and that that is that is a big uh, that that is a, a big hurdle for us. We we've uh, you know we've we've launched a test net, our test net with the machine learning uh, process. Uh, embedded in it. Uh, we expect to launch the main net uh, in, in the next few months. Um, we're continuing to work with, uh, with, with certain clients. Um, and I think, I think going forward, what we're, what we're going to do is to make sure that we're able to deliver on our promise of decentralization. We want to be able to help developers build apps and side chains you know, on our blockchain, and and we're going to continue to uh, to help underpin the value of that. You know, with with cryptocurrencies that actually have uh, have the you know that actually have value, that actually have transparency, and are properly regulated. And I think that and that will I think help us make uh, Genie a first rate blockchain. Fantastic. And for anyone listening that would like to delve a little bit deeper into the subject, have a look at that test net, join your community, or just find out a little bit more information. What's the best way of of uh, doing that? Well, we, uh, we've got a lot of stuff on our website, genie.io, gny.io. Join our Telegram group um, and uh, follow us on Twitter, genie underscore io. Excellent. Well, I'll add all those links for Genie over on the blog post that will accompany this podcast episode. I'd love to stay in touch with you throughout the year and find out how this journey evolves and maybe find out a little bit more about that leap from legal into tech as well. <laughs> I, feel we, I feel we've got unfinished business there, but more than anything. Absolutely. Anytime. A big thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Neil. What a great guy. I, mean, I love chatting with Cosmas today and learning more about how Genie is easily accessed and highly efficient machine learning as a service platform. A machine learning as a service is a concept that's currently redefining the artificial intelligence and machine learning space. To include on-demand machine learning as a service to anyone with access to the Genie network. And the key part of that reach and power of the Genie Network is an inventory of specialised smart contracts that execute AI and ML functions natively on chain. Food for thought indeed. But please, share with me your thoughts by emailing me techblogwriter at outlook.com, tweet me at Neil C. Hughes, let me know your thoughts, let me know if you want to come on the podcast, if you want to say hello, ask a question, whatever it is, I'm here for you. But for everyone else, 
I'll join you again tomorrow with another guest. So thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.